This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome to the second episode of Potting My Way Through the Great Canadian Throwdown. Last week, I made a miniature replica of my childhood home, which was so sweet. <laughs> so let's get into this week's challenge. This week, our judges would like you to build your very own chess set. With this challenge, we want to see your personality come through with each one of these pieces. Let's go. So when I was brainstorming chess set ideas, this one little idea lodged itself in my brain and I couldn't get it out. What if, hear me out, we made a chess set that all the little pieces were made up of candlesticks. Is it practical? No. Will it be playable? Maybe? Is it dangerous? Yes. So I've thrown all of my pieces except for the pawns um, and I got progressively lazier and lazier with each one. <laughs> you can sort of tell because it's really hard to throw like these tiny, like every tiny movement makes such a huge effect on these. So I found it actually quite difficult to throw precisely with these tiny things because they need to match and that means you have to go in with a plan. <laughs> So it was a little tricky, but I'm quite happy with these. Like they just basically look like blobs now because the main thing is going to come in tomorrow when I trim them and add the details. That's going to be when they really come to life. So next step is to make the pawns and I'm actually just going to hand build those because my idea is something like this. <laughs> it's my little example. The candles won't be so tall, like if you can imagine, take out the bottom here, something like this. I really want to make them as identical as possible. So weighing the clay out is gonna be key here. shaping these. I want them to kind of be the shape of like a river stone. Roll. Squish. Squish again. excited because in this video I get to make one of my favorite things in the world, tiles. In the show they gave everyone like a standard chessboard to work on, but I'm not going to turn down the friggin' opportunity to make a tile chessboard. So that's what we're gonna do.
little break to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've never heard about Squarespace before, they're a website you go to to create your very own professional looking website. I've personally been using Squarespace ever since I started my online business and I'm still using them today for my website. There are a few things that I love about Squarespace, one of which is their online shop where you can sell physical or digital products, just like I do with my printable pottery templates. Two, I love their blog feature where you can create really easy and nice looking blogs that feature text, photos, or video. I personally use the blog feature to create a space on my website for all of these video tutorials. And three, did you know that they also have an in-person POS system that's a point of sale, which means you're not just limited to selling online, but you can also sell in real life, like at a market or even in your own store. So head to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash pottery to the people for 10% off your very first website or domain. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, we are done for the day. I'm really happy with how everything is looking. Um, I'm a little freaked out about the time though. So <laughs> let's pause this. We don't, need, we don't need the time running while we chat because this is not a lot of time to finish up. Like basically today was just about making the forms and tomorrow is going to be about like bringing them to life. So there's gonna be a lot to do. So if you missed the last episode, I'm splitting the six hours over the course of two days. In the show, they have six hours in one day. However, I do not have the luxury of a drying room. So I need to let these dry out overnight before I can finish them. We're just gonna save whatever we have left in the timer for tomorrow. Today is the final make day. I need everything on this table finished and drying by the end of the day. We have two hours and 20 minutes left. So what I need to do is like refine these. I have a lot of details that I wanna to add to the chess pieces. I need to also make um, holes for the candle in most of them. Likewise, holes in these pawns. And then I need to finish up my tiles, just smoothing them out, making them nice and getting them ready for firing. Let's get into it. I just realized that I'm an idiot. Who out there noticed that I didn't make enough pieces? Ah, there's four bishops, there's four knights and four rooks, not just two. Like on each side, there's two, but I made two total. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to throw them. I'll put them in front of the fan. And by the time I'm done trimming these, I should be able to trim those. Right? Look at that. Managed to throw them all in just a little over 10 minutes. Not bad. Okay, let's get to what I actually meant to start with, trimming. Now if I was less lazy, I would probably throw a chuck for this so that I could trim it from below but that's not happening.
got my pieces done here, or at least the first round of them. While the other one's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add all the details. Yeah, let's add some details. get an idea and you think it's going to be really good, but it ends up looking like garbage. No turning back now. <laughs> Maybe it'll look better when it's glazed. Let's trust the process here. Although I don't trust the process at this moment, so who am I to tell you to trust the process? locked out here because I was testing my different hole cutters and I realized this hole cutter is exactly the thickness I need for these candles. So that's cool. There's hope. Not much hope in me finishing in time, but there's hope. Now is zoom time. I have to finish these new pieces that I just trimmed and I have to smooth all the tiles and I have half an hour. So let's, uh, let's go. Okay, we have exactly nine minutes and 52 seconds to get through these tiles. So let's go. <laughs> We did it. That was the tightest throwdown that I've been a part of. But we have our 16, what do you call them? Face pieces? That's cards. 16 pawns and 64 tiles that are gonna make a chessboard. Now all I need to do is let them dry out. So I'm going to let them dry out 
overnight and then tomorrow I'll put them in a bisque kiln. I'll candle them first though, I'm pretty sure because one thing I decided to do was because I found this perfectly sized hole cutter on all of these pieces, I just cut all the way through because I'm worried about their drying. Like these aren't that thin and normally I would let them dry out for several days. Same with the tiles. I would let them dry out for several days under pressure. So this quick turnaround thing is quite an interesting challenge. Um, we'll see how it goes. too hot to open yet but I want to get these pieces out <laughs> everything survived thank goodness I shouldn't be surprised considering I did two candles yesterday but I mean I threw some of these two days ago which is crazy to me and considering how thick they are so the only question that remains is what color to glaze them and I have, I can't even tell you like how many times I've changed my mind about this. Ooh, I should grab the candles. I wanted them to match the candles. I have a few different options here. We could go for the classic black and white because I have black and white candles. I also think it might be a really cool contrast because the white is nice and glossy and the black is matte. So playing with that a little bit. I also thought about just leaving the white unglazed, but then it doesn't really match with the white candle very well. So I think I'm definitely going to glaze it. When I was shopping for candles, I also saw this color, which I was like, ooh, this could match my magma glaze. Black and magma, I don't think, that's, that's a little too intense for me, but we could do white and magma. I don't know, it's kind of cookie. I feel like my too much gene is coming out a little bit. Like I should really just go for the classic black and white because this whole chess set, it already has a twist, you know? It already has the candles, you know? I don't need to overcomplicate it. I also thought like my original plan was to paint the crowns, this yellow color. I don't know. For some reason it's reading very like bumblebee to me. So I just, I don't think I can actually do that. I think we're just gonna go with a classic black and white. I think that the candles are gonna look really cool. Am I gonna melt the candle by sticking it in this hot bisque? <laughs> yeah. They've definitely shrunk in, but that's, it's good. Like I want them to be nice and tight. That's actually a brilliant fit. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go for the classic black and white, but then there's gonna be flames. That's cool. is this color combination. I'm really happy that we went with like this very simple color. I'm freaking obsessed with this black. This black is so cool. My white, it's definitely supposed to be a little bit whiter. Um, I think my white is just a little thin right now. So you can also see like the grog coming through. I think it's fine like 
it's not going to be the focus of the piece. Like it's still gonna be really impressive, but I wish it would have been a little wider because then it would match the candle better than it is. It's kind of like off white now. Regardless, it's gonna be cool. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Nothing broke, nothing exploded, which is a freaking relief. Nothing stuck to the shelf. Everything looks good. So let's get to assembling the chessboard now. If you saw my tile mirror video, I'm gonna be using the exact piece of old wardrobe that I did for that video. Keep your old wardrobe pieces, friends, because it's great wood. To stick down the tiles, I'm going to be using some PVA glue. And this is grout. Um, I wanted to use this old grout that I have because I didn't want to run to the store, but this is white and I don't want white. So I saw online that you can actually stain grout with acrylic. Now, I don't think that this is food grade, but obviously this is just like a mosaic. So I'm just going to be adding some black because I want to basically get a gray grout. So it just fades into the background. I don't want the grout to be the focus. So this will be an experiment for me. I have no idea how it's going to work, but first we need to cut out this board. Do I feel like an evil villain right now? I'm not gonna lie and say there's not burns on my hands right now. <laughs> 